You know this by now, and I'll say it over and over again, Capture One, um, this is the default program that professionals rely on for photography. If you go on any major set, this is what is driving all the image files, whether it's organizing, editing, all that kind of stuff. And the great thing with Capture One is you'll find a ton of tutorials now, a lot more than there was available when I was getting started. But one thing that there isn't enough information on is how do people, especially professionals, organize their files. When you're shooting, like in this scenario here, where we have a laptop, we're gonna be tethering, we're gonna be capturing a lot of images, what happens after that? I'm gonna walk you through my process from capturing the images, how we organize them, how we sort them, how do I pick my favorites, and ultimately all the boring stuff that people don't talk about enough of when it comes to Capture One Pro. Okay, I'm back at my desk and we have wrapped up our photo shoot and now I will be walking you through my process. Once we're here, we're gonna go ahead and import our images and we're gonna find them on our project. So we have a few here from a GFX camera. Let's go to our raw files. We will review them for import. We also have a few more images to import from other cameras. So we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. All right, so our images are importing and Capture One is gonna generate previews so that we can sift through them much faster. While this is happening, I'm gonna go into my export settings and change the metadata here to match the project. And the reason we're doing this is well to make sure that there is consistency. Often people will create sessions and it will just mimic your previous session and you don't want your file names to be mixed up or your dates to be mixed up. So we're gonna go ahead and change our export settings. So right under this tab here that I have set up, we're gonna scroll down we're gonna change the project name. And as you can see here, I have it set up for the project name as well as a three digit counter and the image date. In some instances, because of the line of work that I'm in, I will include the camera information as well. That is not required for this project. We're gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now, whichever recipe that I'm using, I'll have to make sure that it is updated. Now that I have my export recipes named appropriately so that as I export files, they're not coming out with the wrong name, I'm gonna go ahead and create a few smart albums. The reason I do this is so that I know which cameras are capturing what kind of image and also allows me to sift through my images a bit faster, depending on what the client requires. Under library, there's session albums. I'll go ahead, click on smart album and you can add any kind of criteria here that pertains to the metadata of your image. We'll go down here, go to camera model, contains GFX. And this is to isolate any images that were captured with my GFX 100S. And now if I were to go under the GFX 100S folder, you will see that the images that we captured with that camera are now all here. Now our images are done importing. When you create a brand new session and you import images, they will not sit in the capture selects output or trash folder. It sits in the root of the folder. So what we will do is run under session favorites, go under punk wedding, and you'll see that all our images are here. We're gonna hit command A to select all the images and drag them into the capture folder. And what this will do, now that you see that there's no images here, if I show you the desktop where the session sits, all those images are now moved physically in the capture folder. This is one of the unique features with sessions. It will physically move the files as you organize them. And now if we go to our capture folder, they are all there. All right, so this is where it gets spicy. We're gonna go through this pretty quick, but I'm gonna make sure to clearly explain my thought process. The first thing that I'm gonna do is get rid of any trash images. And what I mean by this is things that are not critically in focus, things that are well underexposed, or just don't have something that the client might appreciate anyway. For this, I'm gonna first turn on the focus mask, a feature that I love with Capture One. This will show you at a glance in your thumbnails and in your preview what is in focus. And I'm looking for green around the eyes, around the veil especially. We shot most of these images F8 and maybe a little bit above F8. So if I see some green here, I know that it's in focus. With this, I will then scan through my images and see if there's anything that's well underexposed or not critically in focus. The image overall seems a little bit soft. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is select these two images and move them to the trash. They're not going to make the cut. This will not delete your files. So keep that in mind. What it does, it will physically move them 
to the trash folder in the session. I'm going pretty quickly because again, all I'm looking for is if there is green missing from the subject that I'm trying to capture or if there's something severely underexposed. So I got to an image right here, really underexposed. Here's another one, doesn't even have the subject. So we're gonna go ahead, move those as well. As you become more proficient with Capture One, you will be able to work this fast. And this is another reason why I love this application. It lets me work at my speed and not to the speed of the application. So now that we have a capture folder with images that are in focus and have enough dynamic range that we can edit around them, I'm going to go ahead and make selections. To do this, my process is simply scrolling down and hitting the minus key, which will denote a red tag by default in the keyboard shortcuts. So I'm scrolling down and I'm hitting minus anytime I see an image that is somewhat good enough, that has an interesting enough composition and that is good enough to be edited and delivered to the client. I'm being quite liberal here. I'm not being too picky. We're going to do that afterwards. Now that I've made my selections, I'm going to go ahead and organize the capture folder by color tag. I will then take all the red tagged images and move them to my selections folder. So boom, we have a selects folder with all the images that we have denoted to be in focus have enough dynamic range for them, and now have an interesting enough composition that we could actually look at them as potential images for our client. From this project, we have a little over 60 images. Again, I need to deliver about seven to eight. In this process now, I'm going to go through and star the images, whether it's three stars, four stars, and quite rarely five stars. To do this, we're gonna simply scroll down and hit three, four, or five on our keyboard to denote the best images and the most interesting compositions. We're now going to organize by the star rating to select all those rated images and move them to our output folder. The way I view the output folder might be different than some other professional photographers. For me, anything in this folder is what I am currently editing and working on and refining. It is something that is good enough to be exported, to be shared. If it's not in this folder, it's not going to be shared. Now in the interest of time, I'm going to speed up some of these steps, but I want to mention a few key items. If there is an image here that requires advanced retouching that I might need to send to someone else or edit in a different program, I will mark them as a yellow tag using the asterisk key. One of the beauties of Capture One is that you can really fine tune this to your editing process. For me, it is now quite quick to get an image that is somewhat ready for the client. Once I'm ready to begin editing, I'll start by prepping the images. And this is adjusting the crop, the dynamic range, the levels, the highlights, the contrast that we're going to introduce, as well as introducing a little bit of grain, creative grain. Once this is done, I will then go to my Capture One styles. Over the years, I've built together my collection of styles, 10 that I go to for whatever project that I'm working on. I will then apply this style and fine tune them from there. Oh, and if you want to know how you can get my styles for free, um, just stay tuned to the end of the video. Now I've sped this up for the interest of this video. I like where this image is at. I'm going to hit the plus key to change it to a green color tag. I will then organize these images by color tag and it will prioritize the green image. So what I like about Capture One, it knows to put them in the green, yellow, and red and denote them in the status that they're in for my editing process. From here, I'm ready to export. I can then go to the export tab to ensure that I have the right recipe selected. In this case, I'm using a 5,000 pixel on the long side for a higher res social image share. I can then hit the export shortcut to send my file out to the desktop. And then there it is, the final image. 
So there you have it. That is my process, my workflow, how I actually go through my images on a per project basis. And this allows me to just work faster and turn over more images in a much quicker way. My thanks to Capture One for actually sponsoring this video and allowing me to make these tutorials for you guys to enjoy. And not to be outdone, they have an exclusive offer for anyone that is looking to purchase the latest version of Capture One. The details are in the description and in the pinned comment. And to up the ante, anyone that purchases Capture One, the latest version right now using that offer code, let me know. Send me a DM, send me a little screenshot of your receipt and I will send you my Capture One Pro styles. These are 10 styles that I've built over the years for editing my images. So if you've been watching my videos and you're a fan of my images, odds are they went through my Capture One styles. So again, if you purchase the offer, send me a screenshot, send me a DM on Instagram or Twitter, and I'll make sure to get you my set of styles into your inbox as soon as possible. I, I, I will make sure to get to you as soon as possible. It is not hyperbole when I say that this program has changed my life. Long before the developers at Capture One knew who I was, I was using this thing and it was really changing my approach to photography. It allowed me to get the most out of my raw files but just work faster and more efficiently and really to my style. And that's something that, well, more applications should do. Get out of the way and let you work the way you wanna work and give you powerful tools that can propel your creative journey. This is something that I fundamentally believe that Capture One has done and is doing and will continue to do. So with that said, be sure to check out the other Capture One tutorials I have available on my channel. And for more great content, visit Capture One's YouTube channel because they have a ton of tutorials there. As always, my name's Gadjin. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.